So what is Ninja Gaiden? Like a ghost in the moonlight, the ninja warrior stalks his prey. Unseen, unheard, and unnoticed. Mission accomplished. The final battle begins. Ninja Gaiden for Nintendo from Tecmo. Coming soon. NES hard was an entirely different type of hard. Games this time weren't overly long due to technology and standard, which was different from the coin feeding model of the arcade. So most of the time, developers just made the games balls hard to compensate. Back then, this was absolute brutality, but most of them are looked upon fondly now and receive lots of sequels because apparently most of our shared childhood experiences include Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> But did you know, not everything hard is also good. Just look at Bayou Billy. Some hard games are tolerable because the experience is worth the pain and overall, it isn't overly cruel. Some games, however, just make your experience absolutely miserable with the difficulty, which can be due to many factors. This next game might ruin your childhood, so if you are easily squeamish, you might want to look away now. Please don't, I'll appreciate the views. Ninja Gaiden was released in 1988 on both the NES and arcades, though each game differs on gameplay style. The arcade version was more of a classic beat-em-up. Meanwhile, the more notable NES version, the subject of this Waste of Time video, is an action platformer. This is also not to be confused with Ninja Gaiden game on the original Xbox, called Ninja Gaiden. Yep, Tecmo was so creative. You are Ryu Hayabusa a junior ninja who starts out the game trying to find out what happened to his father, who suffers from a bit of a dead at the hands of another ninja in the opening cutscene. This plot evolves into government conspiracies, secret organizations, mythical possession, falling in love with strangers, and whatever the hell this is. You control Ryu across six worlds, running from one side of the screen to the other, slashing enemies with your sword, and trying not to fall in pits. Now at first glance, you might be thinking, hey, this kinda looks like Castlevania. Well, you'll be making a case for Konami to swing the lawsuit hammer. But Ninja Gaiden is different, see? The pace of the game is much faster. You can also break these candles, I mean bugs, for pickups that are either point related, weapons, or refills for those weapons. Uh, no comment. So yeah, if you played Castlevania, this shouldn't be too difficult to grasp. Make it to the end of the levels, conveniently broken up into sections. Kill enemies. Try not to let your health bar empty out completely before you fight the boss at the end of the world. Gather sub weapons, use said sub weapons, and get murked by these birds that drain three points of health. Dear Jesus! <laughs> and fall into pits again and again and again. What sets Ninja Gaiden apart, really, breaks down into three factors the platforming, the in depth story, and the difficulty. Platforming in this game is a lot more robust than Castlevania. Ryu is able to jump, but not as stiff as Simon Belmont does, which leads to a lot more acrobatic dodging and maneuverability. He is also able to hang on to walls and scale up buildings if you're skilled enough with the jumping. This lends positive to speed runs and shows a contrast to Castlevania, where you are more stiff, but are better able to defend yourself. Ryu does have a sword, but the range is small, which leads to being up close and personal to demons trying to hurt you. The sub weapons include ninja stars and fire, which gives Ryu some space from the monstrosities. You'll end up using the sub weapons and maneuverability to quickly make your way through levels, creating a different dynamic than Castlevania. You still fly backwards if you get hit though, so oh well. Also, you grapple to walls if you jump towards them automatically, whether you want to or not. So more often than not, you will accidentally grapple to something you didn't want to while fighting enemies. What makes the story notable isn't the actual story. I mean, ninja, demons, you can figure out the plot. What is special is the game actually has cutscenes that look really nice for the age. The graphics are decent in the main game, but the cutscene pictures honestly bring a lot of life to the story. Not many NES games actually do this, so this is highly appreciated. And last off, the difficulty. This game is like discussing your feelings as a teenager. Hard as that hell. Attacks knock you back super easy. Pits are everywhere. Enemies fly any strange arcs that are hard to hit. It's just all bad. These fucking birds are the bane of players' existence. Like, go the fuck away. Go away. Go away. 
you only get a certain amount of lives, and when they are gone, it's game over, and you have to start over in the beginning of the section you're in. Which is really annoying, but not the end of the world. The bosses can be a little difficult as well, but repeatedly throwing yourself at them till you get their pattern will solve your problem soon enough. That is, until you get the 5-4. This guy is extremely difficult to kill due to this homing attack coming right for you. And once you die, you get sent back to 5-3 even if you have lives left, huh? which is fucking annoying. Why won't it let you continue with the boss? Up to this point, the difficulty was high but not maddening. But this is truly infuriating. You only get one shot at the boss, and with his attack pattern, it's hard to even try to nail it down before he mauls you to death. But if you wish upon a star and act good throughout the year like a good little boy or girl, you'll luckily beat him. At which you learn that he was the guy who killed Ryu's father. Oh wait, now he didn't kill him and your father is alive. Alright, now you're at stage 6-1 and holy shit the bullshit dial has been turned to 11. Enemies are everywhere and will not hesitate to shoot or otherwise drain your health. And even if they won't do it, the pits will. Even worse, some of the enemies are positioned in a way which will interfere with platforming. And again, the walls are positioned in such a way that even when you don't want to cling on to them, you will accidentally all the fucking time. So you make it to the final boss eventually. And oh no, it's your possessed dad, I think. You get your health restored and you try to free him from the control of this evil god, gangster, whatever, and ah, uh, shit, I died. Where does that put me? Nah, 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 6-1, you gotta be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. If you die at the final boss at any time, it doesn't put you outside the boss door. It doesn't put you back at 6-3 like the previous world did. You start all the way over at 6-1. That is complete horseshit. No, I'm mad now. All the little annoyances of this game combine in the last world that truly make finishing this game a fucking slog. So now you have to drag your ass across all the levels again, falling into pits, falling into pits, game over, game over, game fucking over, till you reach the final boss again. And what the fuck is this? Why didn't it refill my health this time? Oh, you are truly playing games with me. If you die at the final boss, fuck you, I guess. No more health refills. Like, why? What the hell is your major malfunction, game? And guess what? Even if you beat your demon dad, there's still the final fight against the leader. And if you die against him, ah, fuck you, back to 6-1. At least when you eventually get back, you don't have to fight dear old dad again, instead starting from the second boss fight phase. Still with no health regeneration, mind you, but after much persistence and still reserve, you can beat him with the sliver of health you have left. And then, 6-5? Wait, we aren't done yet? Wait, what is that? What is that? <laughs> I was genuinely enjoying Ninja Gaiden until the last couple of levels. Such bullshit combined with the controls and maddening decisions actively spoiled how I felt about the game. The ending is what you expect anyway. Listen to me. Play the game, and when you reach your wall, stop, get up, turn the game off, and walk away. You'll look so much more fondly on the game then. You'll think of the nice graphics, music, and quicker gameplay as opposed to thinking of when the game kicked you in the balls with a steel toe boot. This game gets three monstrosities out of five. Watch out! No, father! Ryu, you've got to get them for me. Father, 